Hello and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the IBM Transformation Extender product. Today's topic is using the ITX UI script. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. Before we get into the how of running the TX UI script, I want to take a quick moment to talk about the why. Why would you want to use this script? Well, occasionally a map will crash the execution engine that it's running under, be that command server, launcher, Java API or something else. Now if this can be reproduced at will, a test case sent to support is usually the best way to get to a solution. However, if this was a one-off occurrence and all you have is a core file to analyze, then this is where the TX UI script comes in handy. Let's move on to a practical demonstration. OK, I've opened my ITX9 Design Studio. Uh, this has Service Pack 4, which does not have a specific patch that is required to avoid this particular crash. I have one project called Crash Demo, which I has one uh, source file, test.mms. I'm going to build this map, and in the Files window over on the right you will see the .mmc file has just been created. When I attempt to run this map, you will see that it crashes the entire design studio. The Eclipse window doesn't actually tell us very much of any use for uh, debugging, and we will close that. The only files that are produced are this squiggle CMD file and the uh, work file that is .tmp. Neither of those are very useful. Let's so show the same crash running in the command server. I'm going to prepare my environment. I'm going to call the command server. And when I press enter, the command server runs, loads the map, starts the map, and instantly crashes. Once again, we have a mer.tmp uh, file created. Uh, it was just a, a partial work file, not very useful for diagnostic purposes. Now, there are things we can do on the Windows platform to diagnose an issue, but it's not as useful as creating a core file on a Unix-based platform. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to deploy this map to an AIX box and run the same map and it will crash and then we're going to look at the files that are produced. So here we are back in the design studio and I'm going to open my map and I'm going to build it for the AIX platform. Over on the right you will see the test1.aix file has been produced and while I'm here I'm also going to build it for the Linux platform and we may be demonstrating with that later. Okay, now we need to transfer those files to my AIX box and see if we can reproduce the crash and get some kind of core file. Okay, so here I'm at my AIX box and the first thing to do is to set up the ITX9 environment. I'm going to run the setup script which is mandatory before even using the product. And I'm going to go into the TMP subdirectory and show you that it is currently empty. In my um, product director, project directory, you will see that I have my map and my input XML. It is worth noting that at this point the schema is missing and therefore the rule won't execute properly and therefore the crash will not happen. I did this just to show that the command server is perfectly working and will read a map and execute it. Okay, let's copy in the um, schema file now and we will see that the rule runs properly and the crash should occur. So let's have a look at the files we have. We now have the schema and if I run the same command as before to run the map, here is where we get our segmentation fault. Okay, back to the product installation directory and into the TMP subdirectory. 
you will note that two files and a directory have been created. The two files are a bought and then a process ID number .txt, dtx abort.log, and the directory is dtx underscore and again the process ID number. So let's go into the directory first. Uh, cd dtx underscore start. And we will see that we have two files in here, one called core and one called crash.log. Now the crash.log should be sent to support. It does actually contain some useful information. And I will um, show you that now. If we scroll down through the file, uh, a debugger has been used and the crash point has actually been found. And the crash point in this particular instance is right here. This information will be used to by a user who has to come across the same thing to search for uh, documents that are um, out on the internet where people have come across the same problem and they would see that it has actually been resolved. Okay, so on to the main point, um, the uh, UI script which we are going to run over the core file. Now the um, syntax for running this is dtx underscore ui dot sh, the name of the script. Then the name of the um, execution engine that was being used, which in this case is the command server. And then the name and location of the core file. We don't need the location because we are in the same directory. So we just put in the word core. The analysis tools take over at this point and collate lots of environmental information as well as starting the debugger and pstack tools for example to analyze uh, the core file and then the whole thing is bundled up into a tar file and then zipped for good measure and this file needs then to be sent to IBM support for further review and there we go that's using the command server to uh, simulate a crash and then using the UI script to analyze the core file that was produced. Next, we'll move on to seeing the same crash happen in the launcher and the differences that you would need to do when executing the UI script um, when you're using the launcher environment. Back on the AIX box now, uh, we have the launcher running and my map has been deployed uh, expecting a file called trigger.xml before it will execute. As you will see, I'm in the logs directory. I have the three logs indicating that the launcher is currently running. If we go into our TMP, you will note it has one file, dtx abort.log, which I believe is currently empty. Yes, just created at launcher startup ready to receive information should there be a problem. And if I go into my maps directory, you will note that I have the three files ready to recreate the issue. So to recreate the issue, um, as I said, the launcher will kick off the map once it detects the file trigger.xml. Um, so we need to get a copy of input.xml and copy it as trigger.xml. Okay, so the file has been created. You will note that we have a mer.tmp file created. Uh, this shows that the map was trying to run you will see a Java language null point exception has occurred. And if we were to have a look at the um, processes, we will note that the Java event server wrapper is still running, but the actual launcher itself has crashed. We'll go to the logs directory and we have indications that perhaps the Java event server has tried to restart the launcher. Um, so rather than let it do that, I will um, request it to stop now. That's not going to work. And in the TMP directory, we will see that we have a couple of uh, directories called uh, launcher underscore and then processor ID. 
and this is because the Java event wrapper has attempted to restart the launcher and it has triggered from the same file still being there and then crashed again. So let's go into one of these launcher directories underscore 1107.5.7.4.0 the first one, oops um, gr underscore 1107.5.7.4.0 and we will see that as with the command server we have two files, a crash.log and a core file. Um, let's um, have a quick look at the crash.log file and grep for um, XML because I remember the line with the crash in it had the XML in it and you will note that we have got exactly the same um, crash information uh, telling us that the uh, XML for C document handler choked on an unsigned short integer. Okay, so now that we have a core file here, I'm going to run the UI script on that core file. And the way that we run that is like this dtx underscore UI dot sh. This time, instead of putting the product as dtx cmd sv, we put the product as launcher and then the name of the core file. Again this does some checks, loads it through a debugger, um, runs it through pstack, uh, tars all that information up and then gzips it to create the final .z file that needs to be sent to support for further analysis. Okay, I did promise that we would come back to the Windows platform and run the command server one more time showing the crash but through a debugger. This will give us the same basic diagnostic information that we see in the crash.log file. Um, it's not as useful as the results of the UI script run across the core, but it can be helpful in tracking down if it's a known issue that for which there is a patch available. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is run the WinDebug, which is part of the Microsoft uh, debugging tools for Windows, freely available from Microsoft. From the file menu I'm going to choose open executable and from the executable list I'm going to choose the command server executable dtx cmd sv 64exe from the product installation directory. Now that the executable is loaded I am going to tell the debugger to go and once I tell it to go the um, executable will actually run and then in the background we can tell it to actually load and run the map. Here is the map in my uh, workspace crash demo my test1.mmc double click that now the map has executed and in the debug window we can see that the same module is reporting pretty much the same information as we're seeing on the Linux platform possibly in not in exactly the same terms but uh, it is crashing in exactly the same place and this information may be useful to find if the issue is known and uh, if there is a patch available from IBM support. So there we go. This demonstration was to show you um, why you would want to and how to use the DTX UI script on a core file on one of the Unix platforms when you have a crash using the ITX product, be it launcher, command server or Java API. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.